Hello, I'm Pavel Nomov and this is talk about our joint work with Leah Bazoni. In this paper, we add discounting to uh, Mark Polis coalition logic. Namely, we consider modality that exp expresses the fact that uh, coalition has a strategy to maintain certain condition uh, at certain cost and incorporate discount factor into this modality. To give you an idea why uh, this might be interesting, let's take a look at the following transition system, which we will refer to as a game. Here, agent A has uh, two strategies to maintain uh, condition P. Either A can go up and loop here in state U to maintain condition P indefinitely, or it can go down and loop here in uh, state V. If agent A decides to go up, then the total cost of a strategy, I assume that each transition uh, between W and U and also looping in U costs 2, uh, then the total cost of a strategy is 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is infinity. If agent A goes down and pays cost 1 for this transition, and then keeps paying 1 for uh, each transition looping in state V, then the total cost of this second strategy is 1 plus 1 and so on, it's also infinity. Intuitively, the first strategy costs more, right? It costs twice as much on every step. At the same time, mathematically, the sum is the same infinity. By incorporating discounting, we'll be able to differentiate between those two costs. We'll be able to express the fact that the first strategy actually is more expensive. We add discounting, just like it's done in game theory, accounting, in, multi, um, in machine learning, Basically, uh, on the first step, we take the nominal cost of the action, then um, next cost multiplied by discounting factor, next by square of discounting factor, and so on, where discounting factor is some value between 0 and 1. If we apply this approach to the first strategy, uh, then we multiply each of those tools by increasing powers of gamma, and the total sum of this geometric series is 2 over 1 minus gamma. Apply it to a second strategy, uh, and uh, we'll get sum 1 over uh, 1 minus gamma. As you can see now, uh, the cost of the first strategy is twice as much as the cost of the second. Now let me take a look at more sophisticated example. Here we have two players, A and B. Uh, and let's suppose first that A uh, maintains, uh, well, tries to maintain condition P, alone. To do this, A will have to loop in this state and pay 100 at each time, and then the total cost of this strategy would be 100 over 1 minus gamma. We will write this as in state W, agent A has a strategy to maintain condition P at cost 100 over 1 minus gamma. Now, if agent B wants to maintain strategy, then it will have to send game back into state W each time when A tries to get out. Uh, there might be multiple different scenarios. Uh, A might decide to loop over here uh, or go up and then B will have to bring it back to W or A can go down and then B will have to bring it back into W. A can also use combination reverse uh, approaches. In any case, uh, there's most expensive for B situation when A constantly sends game down instead V. In this case, cost to B to maintain condition P and to loop here between A and between states W and V would be 0 plus uh, 200 gamma plus 0 plus 200 gamma cubed and so on. This is because B pays for 200 but it uh, doesn't pay anything uh, when A sends game back to state V. So the cost uh, to B to maintain condition P is this, and we can write this as in state W, B has a strategy to maintain condition P at this cost. Now, if they decide to cooperate, then, can they, then they can actually do it much cheaper. Namely, what they can do is to send game between 
states W and U back and forth, and then a agent A will pay that much, while agent B will pay that much. Um, therefore, the total cost to collision is much less. We will, unlike uh, resource-bound collision logic, we keep track not of total cost to all agents, but to, of cost to each agent in the uh, collision. So we'll say that collision AB has a strategy to maintain condition P with costs at most 1 over 1 minus gamma squared to agent A and at most gamma over 1 minus gamma squared to agent B. Next example shows that perfect recall matters. That is, if agents have perfect memory about past events from which states game went through, then it might be cheaper for them to maintain a certain condition than if they don't have such memory. Uh, this is a much more complicated example. Uh, each of the agents A, B, C, and D uh, have con full control in the states which are marked with their names. The costs of transitions are labeled and they are built to the agents who make decisions. Um, we will be looking at strategies to maintain condition P starting from state W1 and we will ask collision A, B, D to do this. Now, please notice that means that C is not a member of a collision. Only A, B, and D are the members. Here C might start by going up or going down. Well, uh, let's look at those cases and um, one of the assumptions that I will make here is that gamma discount factor is equal to 2 over 4. This is just to simplify our arithmetic computations. So, with perfect recall, if C decides to uh, go up, uh, then A will have to send a game in state W4 uh, at cost 4 thirds, and with discount factor, this is 8 9. Now, because D has perfect recall, it remembers that game came uh, to W4 from uh, W2, and it will be able to spread the cost between agents A and B uh, by sending now game into state W6, where B will maintain it indefinitely, paying one on each step. With discount factor, that's the cost to agent B. Now, in our situation, if C decides to send go, uh, game down, then B will have to pay here on the second step uh, for thirds, uh, but A then will maintain, uh, when D will send it to A to balance the costs, and A will maintain it with uh, uh, the same costs, A to the 9. So as a result, because D remembers from which state game came into state W4, it will be able to balance the load, cost uh, load on uh, both agents, and each of them will pay no more than eight nines. So as a result, collision A, B, D, with perfect recall here, has a strategy to maintain condition P uh, at a cost eight nines to agent A, eight nines to agent B, and uh, zero cost to agent D. However, if agent D does not have a perfect recall, then it would not know from which of those states game came into W4, and it will not be able to load, uh, to balance the load. It, it will have to do something, for example, always send it to agent A into, step, uh, w, into state W5, and in that case, um, agent A might end up paying as much as 16th ninth, um, and we only can say that that strategy is limited um, to um, 6 9 to A, uh, 8 9 to B, and 0 to D. So as you can see, uh, the cost of a strategy as we define it depends on whether agents have perfect memory or they do not. In this paper, we assume that they do. After those examples, let me proceed to uh, more formal definitions. The models that we use for our logical system are games which are kind of similar to uh, systems uh, used uh, as semantics for resource-bounded coalition logic. 
The major difference is that we take a more general approach and we assume that cost of transition to each agent can depend on actions of other agents. So it's more like in uh, game theory, traditional game theory, uh, uh, cost depends not only on your action, but on action of other agents. The language would we uh, consider here contains a single modality that says that collision C at cost X can maintain condition phi. Please note that X in this uh, formula is not a number, it's actually a function that assigns limit, uh, cost limit to every agent in collision C. An important uh, notation that we'll use on the next slide is phi divided by mu, where mu is a real number. Phi divided by mu is an operation that recursively goes through formula phi and each subformula of formula phi and divides subscript x by mu, divides it for every agent. Now, uh, here's the formal semantics uh, uh, for this modality. Uh, collision C can maintain at cost x condition phi if there is a strategy, that is, assignment of action to all members of collision uh, in all states of the game, there is such strategy that for any play of the game, uh, first, cost of uh, strategy to each uh, agent will be no more than the one specified by function x, and second, uh, condition phi will be maintained indefinitely in this game until we either reach the final state of the game or uh, or just continue forever in without stop. Now, over here we divide phi by gamma n uh, because we always count all the costs in present money. When we nest modalities, there are actually two possibilities to think about subscript of the second internal modality, where it refers to money expressed in the current, uh, cost in the current money or in the future money. We have chosen to do it in the uh, current money, which results in more elegant logical system, and that is what gamma uh, accounts for. There is more discussion of this in the proceedings. Um, now, we've said that, here's the logical system uh, that we propose. Uh, it has four axioms. The first, reflexivity, says that uh, if collision can maintain condition phi at certain costs, then condition phi must be true in the very beginning. You cannot maintain something which is not true to start with. The second axiom is a version of Mark Polly's uh, axiom that allows us to combine power of two different collisions as long as the net is joined. Montanisti axiom just uh, uh, captures the fact that if you can do something at small costs, then you can do it at larger costs. That's because we look at costs as an upper limit on what uh, collisions might spend maintaining certain condition. The most interesting property here is number four, uh, transitivity axiom. It says if collision C can maintain condition phi at cost X, then at the same cost X, the same collision can maintain the readiness to maintain. Um, it turns out that that's all that you need, and our two main results are um, soundness and completeness of this logical system. Well, thank you very much for watching this movie, and uh, I hope to see you all uh, next time uh, at Ichikai 22 in person.